With the rise of artificial intelligence, lots of data center professionals are talking about liquid cooling to support powerful new GPU hardware. But what will liquid cooling look like in a high density data center environment? We'll show you today with a demo of a two phase direct to chip liquid cooling system. Welcome to Data Center Richness. I'm Rich Miller, and I've spent 25 years telling the story of data centers, cloud computing, and AI infrastructure. In this podcast, I'm sharing conversations with the innovators building our digital future. Now, here's our show. Computers generate lots of heat, which is usually managed with room-level air conditioning and fans inside the chassis to guide cool air across the CPUs. But as AI workloads drive up power and thermal demands, liquid cooling is emerging as an important technology for data centers, especially in light of the recent news that NVIDIA's roadmap could create rack-level power densities of up to 600 kilowatts per rack within the next two or three years. That's about 10 times more than most data centers are designed to manage. So what will liquid cooling look like in the data center? At the recent Data Center World Conference, we reviewed a new liquid cooling design from Excelsius, which brings liquid coolant right to the chip. Here's a closer look. Hi, I'm Rich Bonner. I'm the CTO of Excelsius. We're a direct-to-chip two-phase company. Uh, to show exactly what that is, we have this nice tabletop demo here that I'm going to focus on. Basically, in two-phase cooling, you're going to bring a fluid near saturation temperature. It's going to flow over a chip where it's heated. Once it's heated, it's going to create vapor bubbles. Those vapor bubbles... That's the little boiling we see. Yeah, you see it right there here very nicely. You actually have this nice cold plate that has a see-through lid, so you can actually see the boiling happening on the channels. The boiling is a very vigorous process. It really stirs the fluid and optimizes the amount of heat that you can remove off that chip. Uh, further, that vapor can carry away a lot of heat. So you really don't need a lot of liquid going to the cold plate in order to remove the amount of heat that we're talking about here. Uh, this demo is, is very nice. It also includes this nice GUI. You can change the power going to the chips very quickly. And when we do that, when we decrease the power and increase the power, you see the temperatures fluctuate very little because the performance is, is so outstanding. And there's no instabilities caused by that boiling process. Actually, if I turn this one all the way off, you can even see the boiling starts to slow down. And then if I quickly ramp that heat transfer back up, you'll see within a few seconds the boiling will return. There you go. There it is. Very similar to, to boiling a pot of water, but we're basically taking that, condensing it into a solution that's fit for an IT gear system. Some people may be familiar with the liquid cooling. It uses immersion tanks. You guys do something a little different. So maybe tell me a little bit about that and yeah, what yeah. kind of coolant and the fluid is that you're yeah, so, so our solution is very compatible with the single-phase water-based solution. So you can kind of I'll, I'll direct it over here to one of our in-server solutions. So basically what you see here is a server where we've removed the single-phase cold plates and put our two-phase cold plates in their place. So from the outside, it looks exactly like a single-phase water-based solution. We have the same cold plates, same tubing, uh, even same quick disconnects. And if we have a couple minutes, I can show you uh, this implementation in a rack to show you the rest of the CDU and other components. Okay, Rich, maybe tell us what we're looking at here. What we're looking at here is the back of a two-phase direct-to-chip liquid cooling solution. Again, I'll emphasize what I was saying before. If it looks like a single-phase water-based solution, it should, right? So basically we have a CDU in this implementation that sits at the bottom of the rack that has your pumps, heat exchangers. You do have facility water coming to the back of the CDU to ultimately reject the heat, but all of the same CDU components that would be in a single phase water solution reside in this CDU. I will point out that our CDU has some nice features for serviceability. For instance, I can easily remove any one of these three pumps. The other two pumps will increase their flow rate so that the pump is completely hot swappable and you lose no loss of cooling uh, during that operation. Other key components, we have a manifold for supplying liquid, quick disconnects that allow you to remove servers. Obviously, I you'll see liquid going into that server and you saw the solution before that had the cold plates. We don't have to go right. do that again. Vapor will come back, go into a manifold. 
Another feature that you probably didn't even notice, but it's kind of important to the uh, functionality, is a reservoir that sits at the top. That's actually a key component that allows us to prevent cavitation and allow stability over any of the rapid transients that you see with AI. So when you say cavitation, what do you mean there? Uh, so sometimes with two-phase solutions, if you don't work to overcome cavitation, you will have vapor flowing back to the pumps, which could cause a short-term uh, flow instability. But our system has been uh, qualified over a wide range of flow rates, powers, corner cases, operating conditions to, to avoid that. And what kind of applications and, and folks are using this? Obviously, everybody's talking about AI. AI is there for sure. AI benefits from the ability to remove uh, high heat fluxes and high power from a single rack. You've already demonstrated over 250 kilowatts in a rack. There's other solutions that use some of the other benefits of two-phase pooling. For instance, uh, in the finance industry, we see a, a, really a fear of water. They want very high reliability. Our coolants don't conduct electricity. So if there is any kind of leak, you have no loss of performance, you have no loss of IT here. So um, those, are, those are the main two that, that we're seeing.